Hi, my name is Ihab El Haj. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at Indiana University School of Medicine in Indianapolis, Indiana. On behalf of my co-authors, I want to thank the editorial board of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Journal for the opportunity to discuss our article, Role of Peroral Pancreatoscopy in the Evaluation of Suspected Pancreatic Duct Neoplasia, a 13-year U.S. single center experience. Peroral pancreatoscopy permits the direct visualization of the pancreatic duct. The role of pancreatoscopy in the identification, evaluation, and sampling of occult PD lesions that may not be visible by CT or MRI, by EUS, or by pancreatography remains limited to case series. Our study expands the growing literature on this role and summarizes our experience between the years 2000 and 2013. The aims of this study were, first, to evaluate the safety, the efficacy, the technical success, and adverse events of pancreatoscopy, and second, to determine the usefulness of pancreatoscopy for the differentiation of malignant from benign diseases of the pancreas duct. We included all patients who underwent pancreatoscopy for the evaluation of indeterminate main pancreas duct strictures, dilatation, or with suspected or known main duct IPMN. All patients have had pancreatic imaging, including a CT scan and or an MRI or MRCP. Many of these patients have already had a number of ERCP and EOS examinations with negative sampling before the index pancreatoscopy exam. Upon completion of the pancreatoscopy exam, the endoscopist provided a presumptive diagnosis based on his visual impression. Pancreatoscopy findings suggestive of Pancreatoscopy findings suspicious for malignancy included the following dilated or tortuous tumor vessels, ulceration, friability, infiltrative stricture, ductal cutoff, mucin, protrusions, vegetative lesion, papillary or finger like projections, or villiform lesion. The pancreatoscopy findings suspicious for benign or reactive changes included the following, erythematous or edematous mucosal changes without ulceration or mass, band-like scarring, coarse atrophic mucosa, and the blurred vessels. Pancreatoscopy directed biopsies were obtained under direct pancreatoscopy visualization. Pancreatoscopy assisted biopsies, PAB, were obtained under fluoroscopy guidance. The final diagnosis of pancreas duct neoplasia or non-neoplasia was based on criterion standard and in composite reference standard criteria. The standard criteria included neoplastic cytohistopathology. The composite reference standard criteria included neoplastic POP impression and a clinical course suggestive of malignancy. And the non-neoplastic POP impression and a benign clinical course at more than 12 months at follow-up. The total number of patients included in this study cohort was 79. The overall technical success was achieved in 78 patients, close to 97%. The total number of procedures performed was 102. 33 patients had PD neoplasia, and 44 patients did not have PD neoplasia. The PD neoplasia group included patients with pancreatic duct adenocarcinoma and patients with main duct IPMN. The non-PD neoplasia group included patients with benign stricture, mainly in the context of chronic pancreatitis, and patients with branch duct IPMN. The mean follow-up of patients was 62 months. Adverse events were noted in 12 cases, of whom four patients had post-procedure acute pancreatitis, accounting for a total of 4%. The presumptive diagnoses based on the pancreatoscopy visual impression were then compared to the final diagnoses. We had two false positive and three false negatives visual impressions. This allowed us to calculate the sensitivity, specificity, the positive predictive value, the negative predictive value, and the accuracy of a pancreatoscopy visual impression alone, PDB and or PAB alone, and combined POP visual impression with biopsies. The sensitivity and specificity for POP visual impression alone were 87 and 86 percent. 
Those for the biopsies were 87% and 100%. When combined together, the POP visual impression and PDB and PAB, the sensitivity increases to 91%, the specificity increases to 95%, and the accuracy was close to 94%. In summary, our study is the largest single center study of attempted pancreatoscopy in the evaluation and sampling of indeterminate pancreatic duct lesions. Our study demonstrates a high technical success rate, a high accuracy of visual impression, a safe tissue sampling with an acceptable rate of adverse events. I conclude by recommending consideration of pancreatoscopy when evaluating pancreatic duct pathology, especially when non-invasive imaging or EUS or pancreatography when non-diagnostic. We thank you for your interest in our study and invite you to read the manuscript in full for more detailed analysis and discussion.